writing process is really I get an idea, like um, uh, something suspenseful or mysterious or a cool setting, and then I think about, you know, the characters that would be there and the story that might develop and the setting, and I take a bunch of notes over a long period of time, and then I try to think of how to put the story together in a really nice way, and I develop an outline, and then I just sit down and start writing. Uh, when I'm really flowing, I'll write for two or three hours in the morning and then two or three hours in the evening and just try to keep going to flesh out the outline I've created. And some advice on how to write better. I really think um, the best way to learn how to write better is to read a lot of good books all the time and really uh, force yourself to keep reading uh, better and better and maybe more difficult books uh, the older that you get. And then of course, you just sit down and write a lot and really learn how to write well. Really, my youngest daughter inspired me to write the novel. Um, once we went and sat by a lake and we wrote little stories and I read a little bit to her and she liked it. And she really encouraged me to keep going on it. And so did my other kids and my wife. And that really inspired me to, to get going on writing Winter House. And my influences uh, are really authors that I liked when I was younger, like Roald Dahl or C.S. Lewis, who wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I really loved a book called The House with a Clock in Its Walls by John Bellairs. Those books really influenced me a lot, especially when I was younger. Well, um, I've always liked big hotels because it seems like there's a lot of things that could go on there and behind every door there might be something mysterious and, and down every hallway you might turn and find something kind of strange or interesting. So I just thought there were a lot of really cool possibilities for suspense or mystery in a big hotel. And the Winter House Hotel doesn't really exist, but there is a hotel up in Canada on a place called Lake Louise in the Canadian Rockies. It's called the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise or something like that. And although I've never been there, I've seen pictures of it. And in my mind, it sort of looks like how I envision the Winter House Hotel um, looking like. So. Um, that hotel on Lake Louise sort of inspired me to, to, to picture the Winter House Hotel. Um, I definitely did not know the full story when I sat down to write it. Even though I had an outline and a sense of the characters and the setting, uh, the story changed dramatically as I continue to work on it. And I really think that's probably true for most writers. You think you have an idea and then things sort of evolve as you really get into the process and you discover things that you never would have thought of when you began writing the books. And that's definitely, uh, that's what happened to me. I came up with all sorts of ideas as I got deeper and deeper into writing the book Winter House. Well, I would probably have to choose Norbridge Falls. He's the proprietor and the owner of Winter House, and he's an older gentleman as well, so that probably fits me a little bit better. Um, and he's maybe a little bit quirky and a little bit mysterious, and uh, uh, and he loves the people in his family. So I hope that that kind of is uh, some points of overlap with me. Although the, the, the hero of the story, the protagonist, Elizabeth Summers, uh, she's a big bookworm, and that definitely describes me. So uh, that trait of Elizabeth uh, is something that I possess as well. And Elizabeth loves puzzles and codes and wordplay, and, and I'm the same way. I've always loved that kind of stuff. So I'm probably like, you know, Norbridge and a little bit like Elizabeth in the Winterhouse books. Well, thank you very much. I hope I answered the questions uh, to your satisfaction. And thanks for uh, appreciating the book Winterhouse. Uh, I, I really appreciate that myself. Thank you. Thank you.